In this Change Through Pain podcast episode, we're going to talk about five traits that define a humble man. This includes speak your truth with love, listen with intention, hold space, be trustworthy, be a role model. This is a follow-up episode to an earlier podcast that I recorded, uh, number 11, Are Men Allowed to Have Emotions? And in that episode, I just discussed men, their emotions, how society has influenced the way men behave. And this is a follow-up to that. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. As a man who has walked this earth for 44 years, I've been defined by my childhood, just the basic conditioning of my environment my entire life, those that I've interacted with, my parents, my friends, my relatives, my coworkers, classmates, and even strangers. A lot of the influence has been based upon watching television, uh, movies, magazines, commercials, the songs on the radio, and anything in between. And a lot of what is dictated to us as men is that to be a man, to be a manly man, you've got to be tough, rugged, strong. You've got to wear plaid. You've got to have a big beard. You've got to drive a big truck. You've got to chop wood. You go fishing. You drink beer with your buddies. You don't share anything except talking about women and cars and sports. Well, I'm here to tell you today that that does not define who a man should be. And there's a lot of different things of, of that I can share of why I feel that way. And I'm going to break it down. And the objective is to give you a perspective of someone who used to live their life this way and no longer does after facing my truth and allowing myself to release the hurts, the traumas, and the conditioning of my childhood and my life and become who I was always meant to be, which has opened up completely new avenues for me. It's a completely new life. It's a new journey in my relationships with my sons, relationship with my father, my mother, my sister, my cousins, my friends, my coworkers, strangers, and those who I will eventually meet. And I got to tell you, it's pretty exciting. I wake up in the morning ready to tackle the day, ready to see what is going to be presented to me. And I'm ready. And I get myself ready every single morning uh, to ensure that I am ready to respond and react or not react to the best of my ability and to try to do better today than I did yesterday. So here we go. Five traits that define a humble man. Number one, speak your truth with love. And this falls under the communication category. What does that even mean? Speak your truth. When I started diving into these teachings and the soul searching and trying to discover who I am and why I act the way that I do and why I'm defensive and why things trigger me and why I get angry and why I just don't allow people to be themselves. And what I mean is I had to look within and I had to decide enough is enough. I don't want to carry the resentment, the anger, the anxiety, the pain around anymore. I am ready to live a new life. I don't want to repeat the same patterns And I decided to be honest and speak my truth with myself and do the soul searching and then start setting boundaries in a loving manner with others and teach them how to treat me with love as well and learn to be empathetic and to be compassionate and patient 
and kind and loving and genuine. And it hasn't been easy. And to really look at yourself, if you just stand in front of a mirror and you look right back at yourself, you stare into your eyes and you become completely honest with yourself. Are you truly happy with who you are? Do you like who you are? Do you like the relationships that you have? Have you been just kind of going through the motions? What is it that you're doing right now to improve yourself? What are you doing to others? How are you hurting others by your words, your actions, or lack thereof, of either of those things? And when you are honest and truthful with yourself from a place of love, to not be so hard on yourself once you speak your truth and realize that you were doing the best that you knew how at that moment with the conditioning and the tools that you've been provided that you learned up to that point in your life. All you can do is the best that you can do in that present moment with what you've learned and who you are. Will you make mistakes? Yes. Will you say things that are hurtful to others at times? Yes. Will you get frustrated, angry, impatient? As a man, that tends to happen. And I'm just speaking from the truth of myself. And if this doesn't apply to you uh, and you've already moved through this in your life, I'm very happy for you. I'm very grateful that you're in that place. But if you've been where I have been, and you've come out of it, you understand what I'm saying, and you know that it is possible, and anyone is capable of changing if they decide. There are things that will influence them to change, but it's 110% up to them. They have to wake up every morning and get themselves out of bed and take a shower and get dressed and eat breakfast and make their coffee and get in their vehicle and drive to work or school and interact with others and accomplish things in life and set goals and take journeys and learn new things and meet new people and be kind and giving and loving and understanding and patient. Those are all choices. You can choose to do none of those things. And if you never speak your truth with love to yourself and to others, you'll never get to where you're supposed to be while you're here on this earth. Number two, Listen with intention. I also, I also associate, associate this with be patient. So wh what does that even mean? Listen with intention. Well, instead of listening to the person with the idea that when will it be my turn to say what I want to say so I can allow my ego to get stroked versus I'm actually listening to what you're saying and it doesn't matter really what I want to do to try to solve your problem or help you. It's a matter of just listening and using words of affirmation to assure the person that you are listening and you're hearing what they're saying and then ask them questions that can maybe guide them along the path while they attempt to discover what it is that they're trying to discover. And that goes with any conversation. And if they ask you a direct question and you're listening and you see that they want you to assist them or help them or guide them, then provide that insight to them, but do it with love, do it non-judgmental. Share it from a place of understanding, empathy, and compassion. And don't get worked up if they don't take your advice and they continue to make the same mistakes. Just listen with intention to understand, to learn, and to help if they request it. And again, five traits to define a humble man. Speak your truth with love, right? You got to do that first. 
But then you've got to listen with intention. You've got to be able to listen to the voices and the thoughts in your head. And you need to decide if those thoughts and voices, what they're saying is true. Have you been conditioned your entire life to think negative, to think poorly about yourself, to think that you're not good enough, that you'll never amount to anything, that you're worthless? If you have been conditioned to believe that, it's time to take ownership of your thoughts and listen with intention to what you're saying and decide to change what you're saying. Decide to no longer respond or react or allow those thoughts to control how you think, feel, or what you do or say. Just change the script. Start implementing gratitude practices and, and saying things and journaling things that build you up. Just look in the mirror every single morning and say five things about yourself that you want to be true or that you know are true or that you believe are true. I am enough. I am worthy. I am happy. I am healthy. I am empathetic. I am kind. I am loving. I will make it through this situation and I will do my best. Today is going to be a great day. And in every moment, I'm going to be present and I'm going to do the best that I possibly can. And if I do something to hurt somebody else, I'm going to apologize immediately and learn from it and grow and become a better person. Number three, hold space. That's something I never knew or understood. I've always considered myself pretty good at listening to others and others have come to me often to share things because I do listen with intention and I come from a place of love when I offer assistance to them. Now, holding space, creating a safe place for someone. So in a relationship with a significant other, for example, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse, you want them to feel safe, to be themselves, to share with you. And if you're judging them, if you're angry with them, if you're short with them, if you just belittle them, if you push them aside, if you make them feel less than because of your insecurities and your ego driven desire to protect yourself, if they say something that triggers a childhood trauma in you that you've never healed from, and you automatically respond with that automatic negative thought, and then you verbalize it to them, and then you go back to apologize and say, I didn't really mean that. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. You got to fix that. Once you recognize that, your inability to hold space and be a safe place for your significant other, that's when you know you've got to do the work and you've got to, at that moment, speak your truth about what triggered you and dig deep to discover what it is that you haven't healed from. You've got to listen to yourself with intention to what that is and decide how you're going to change and take action now. Don't put it off. Do it now. And then you'll discover that when you become more patient, more understanding, more empathetic, more loving, the triggers are starting to be broken down and removed from your subconscious, then you will suddenly become a safe space, a safe place to hold space for someone. They can come to you. They can share. They can be themselves. They can be goofy. They can be silly. They can share intimate secrets that they may have never told anyone. The fourth trait that defines a humble man is be trustworthy. And that also coincides with honesty. In my most recent relationship that ended badly, 
uh, we were incompatible because we were two broken souls and we were brought together to bring out the things that we needed to heal. Some would say we brought out the worst in each other and, and we did if you observed it. And I'm, I'm not proud of some of the things that I did or said or didn't do or didn't say, but I had to go through that journey to learn. And you just got to be honest and in order to be trustworthy. So if you get to a place to where you've spoken your truth with love, you've listened with intention, you've able to hold space because you're working on healing your unhealed hurts and your traumas, you can become trustworthy because you will be honest and you will have spoken your truth in every situation and they know exactly where you're coming from. You may not agree all the time, but they know that you're going to be a trustworthy source to be honest with them and provide real, solid, truthful feedback. And then you being more patient and loving and understanding and less triggered and being able to listen with intention and be patient and not take everything so personally and know that what they might say is a reflection of what they're dealing with on the inside. Once you understand that and accept that, you'll be able to be a trustworthy, safe place in order to listen and be patient while they speak their truth with love. Because as a man, you need to set the example. You need to be the leader. And that rolls into the fifth trait that defines a humble man. Be a role model. Be a leader. Be courageous. Be strong. Have strength. As a man who is masculine and we all have men and women both have feminine and masculine energies and traits. And once we learn to get in touch with both sides and balance those two energies, that is when we're able to become the man or men that we were meant to become. And we will be humble because we are no longer driven to win or succeed or always be right from a state of ego. We learn to no longer listen to the ego. And what we do instead is we listen with intention, with love from our heart to understand and to realize that we're all on this earth for the same purpose just to live each moment to the best of our ability and to enjoy life and be happy or at least take the best of everything that you can in every moment, everything that happens to you. Look for the good in whatever it is and learn from it. So you've got to be the leader with that masculine energy that is going to attract the feminine that is going to allow the feminine to find you to be a safe place and then to open up and connect with you in a way that you've never even imagined. And if you've listened to this and you've experienced this, you know what I'm speaking of. It is unlike anything. And I've only touched the surface because I have had to work through the last several years to get to this state of mind, to get to this state of consciousness, to get to this state of love and understanding and empathy and compassion and growing and learning and discovering every single day who I am, how I want others to treat me, how I want to treat myself and how I choose to treat myself. And now that I really understand that what defines a man or what defines a humble man is not anything that I was conditioned or taught to believe growing up. And we as men must 
connect with ourselves and speak our truth. We need to listen with intention. We need to hold space. We need to be trustworthy and honest, and we need to be a role model. We need to lead. We need to be a courageous. We need to have strength. And all of these things are all through observing others and learning and growing. And if you can do these things and just be patient with yourself as you work through these things, others are going to judge you. I promise you other men are going to judge you. So many men that grew up the way that I did are not ready to receive this message and they're not going to understand and that's okay but you can set the example you can be the example for others and that is another piece of the puzzle of what change through pain is all about and it's my mission to help others to change their lives in this moment to provide some influence some insight some practical tools for men to change their lives and to become a humble man by speaking their truth with love, listening with intention and being patient, holding space and being a safe place, being trustworthy and honest and being a role model, leading courageous with strength. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you found some value, some insights, some inspiration, motivation, some practical tips and tools in this podcast episode today. I appreciate you listening. I hope you share this with somebody who needs to hear this. Thank you so much. You have a blessed day. Till next time. Thank you for listening to the Change Through Pain podcast. I'm so grateful that you're here. As a men's coach, my mission is to empower men to have confidence, be disciplined, and live on purpose with passion. If you're a man who desires to replace current habits that are keeping you stuck by creating new habits that will transform your mental, physical, financial, and relational health, this program is for you. The Man on a Mission, that is the signature program that will take you from where you are now and create the life you desire in 15 weeks. 